So in this video, we're going to use boundary file analysis as a start point. But in the real world, we want to do a little bit more than that. So in the previous video, when we were talking about traditional boundary value analysis, we looked at how we would come up with our initial set of data. So we came up with 9, 10, possibly 11, 99, 100, 101. There are our values. When we put them in this application, this is a real application, um, I can see that there's no error message there. I put in 101, I get an error message. So the question is, is that all we would do? And no, we wouldn't because there are more boundaries here. This is the boundaries in terms of the validation on the front end. This is a, an HTML app, so it's a form. So clearly it submits somewhere. So we would normally be concerned with, well, what happens if I do actually submit these values? Can I submit values that are incorrect? Now, I'm not really going to go down the, the technical route. I'm just going to stick here and say, I would want to do the submit process. So I can actually submit this with its 101, I can submit with 100. And the way that this application has been written is that it doesn't really submit to a backend. It just renders in here uh, what value we've typed. So I can see that by putting in 100, I can see 100 up here, and that's how we'll know what we are testing. So one of the questions then is, given our 9, 10, 11, what are our assumptions that are in here? So we are assuming that we cannot type in characters, A, B, C. Now we're starting to veer off into equivalence partitioning at this point in terms of what are our equivalent inputs into this field? So numbers, uh, 0, 1 to 9, they would all be equivalent valid values. And character values, they would all be equivalent invalid values. So A, B, C, D, E. But we can type in E because E is a value that is associated with numbers because we've got exponential numbers. So I could write 2 exponential 1, which is 2 times 10 to the power 1, which means 20. And we're not getting an error message here. So presumably that gets passed through into the back end. So that is a valid representation of a number. We made the assumption that our number representation had to be in terms just of digits, because that's what we were told. We're restricting this to numbers. That's what this implies. This is a number field. I can move up and down. I get numbers. But E is part of that number equivalence. So what else is part of numbers? Um, minus, plus, uh, full stop, or comma in some countries. So if I could make valid numbers out of this, uh, so plus 10, that would, to me would be equivalent to 10. And I'm not getting an error message, but the plus sign hasn't made it through. So I'm able to enter plus 10 in here, but I'm not really able to submit it. So that's being filtered out. So uh, good, bad, doesn't matter. It can get through, but we're exploring at this point. I'm looking at some, what other representations have I got here? So I know that minus is valid. Minus 10 should be below the range. So I should get an error message there. Value must be greater than or equal. So we know that it's being trapped there. If I hit enter there, I get an error message. That's good. So what else have we got? We've got dots. So decimal points, 1.0 value must be greater than or equal to great 10.0. So 10.0. So that's okay. Um, I submit that and I get 10.0. So 10 point. Now we made the assumption that we were working with integers over here in my boundary value analysis. I made the assumption that I was working with integer values. Clearly the application accepts, um, decimal points. Is that a bug? Should it do that? Doesn't matter. The fact is it does it. Now, at this point, we have no back end. If we had a back end that was converting these numbers, and if that expected integers, we might get a conversion error. We might see a 500 server error where it tries to convert, tries to treat a float as an integer. That might give us an issue. Now, the question is, are these floats or are these real numbers. Now, chances are, because it's a computer, it probably is a float. But that would mean I can do things like 10.2 uh, 
zero 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 to 10. So is that actually 10 or is that 10.01 being valid, being validated as? Now I can't really tell here. If I do 9.99999, will it get rounded up? Is one of the questions. So if I try and submit that, I'll get an error message. So if I just keep expanding this, I must be greater than or equal to 10. So I'm keeping adding numbers in here and it's given me an error message each time, so it doesn't seem to be rounding up. It doesn't seem to be processing this, processing this as a number and rounding it up. So that's a good thing. Uh, what about 100? And then I put in zero, that gets accepted. Okay, so 100.01. So value must be less than or equal to 100. Okay, but do we get rounding errors here? So if I keep adding zeros in here, then, so we get, so the error message went away. So let me get the error message back, put zeros in. So at this point, I've not got an error message on this number. I'm gonna submit that. So I was able to submit this to however many decimal points that is. And that is a number that is greater than 100. So we've gone, we've somehow managed to bypass the, the the number range validation in here by looking at the representations. So, and our, this was not part of our boundary value analysis, but clearly this is one more, one infinitesimal amount more than a hundred. Our boundary value analysis is supposed to pick up these kind of things, but our boundary analysis made assumptions, made assumptions that these were integers. Now, I don't know what level of technique would have led to this, perhaps some sort of syntax testing, but we picked up through exploration using uh, boundaries as our basis. And I guess the point here is, we have to be very careful with boundary value analysis because sometimes it causes us to focus in on the inputs without concern for the implementation. So boundary value analysis is taught as a black box technique. I don't like the notion of black box, white box. It's very easy to see what the white box is here. If I just look at the code, I can see that we're using the built-in uh, HTML validation. So what we've actually got there is a, a bug in Chrome. Uh, it'd be interesting to see whether we have the same thing in Firefox. So here I am in Firefox, I'll put in 100, and that's accepted, put in 100 point zero one please let value that is more than a hundred well let me submit that no okay so let's start adding zeros and we've got the same thing so in firefox firefox is letting me send through um, values no oh, firefox has truncated it so although it validated with a long value there firefox when it's sending it through has actually truncated it and hasn't let the problem go through which is interesting. So given the, the browser implementation, we're seeing different things because we haven't explored the boundary in terms of the actual platform that we're working on here. So we have to take all these things into consideration when we are testing. Because this, by default, is not something you'd immediately think of as, well, clearly I've got a cross-browser risk. This is HTML5, it's validation, it's very simple not the sort of thing that you'd initially think, I need to check this for cross-browser testing to see how it works on different browsers. But clearly, even with something as simple as this, you can have different implementations in the browsers there. And so I'm not gonna explore this further. It might be interesting to do that. I don't know if this will round up. So even though I say I'm not gonna explore that further, I'm just gonna check one thing. 99.99999, this is all valid still treated as valid, what happens when I submit it? Please select a valid value, two nearest values. So what's interesting here is Firefox is doing a slightly better job because by default, HTML5 has a step value of one. So really, 
that is not anywhere in a step value of one, so it shouldn't really be putting in the decimal points. I wonder if Firefox knocks out the decimal points on everything. So if it's knocking out decimal points, that would be submitted as 99. No, so it's not going to let me submit that because it's not a uh, value, but it did let me do that with lots of zeros. All right, so as soon as I get enough zeros in there, it's not treated as a number. Will it submit that as 99? Yes, so it truncated it out. So we've got a different set of issues in there. Um, it'd be interesting to explore this more, but the, I didn't, didn't expect that to happen. The point is, um, when you're working with boundary value analysis, when you're working with your initial set of data, you really want to explore further than that have this as a, a basis to start to start but you have to take the implementation and the platform into consideration your techniques are only going to get you so far and if you don't explore it you're you're not going to see these kind of problems